Uh, anyway, today morning I thought of uh, discussing about the techniques of chest examination and cardiovascular system examination. I know this is a COVID season, so we have to have the distance as well as the mask, but the mask is going to uh, create a problem for my talking, so I may take off the mask, okay. Uh, now, the, regarding the chest examination, you know the chest examination is the easiest station. But most of the time I have seen the candidates, they don't know how to do a systematic, a brisk, a sleek examination with a limited time of 5 minutes or 6 minutes because by uh, 6 minutes or 7 minutes the examiner will tell you 2 more, 5 minutes they will examiner will tell you 2 more minutes and then they will mess up the whole thing and miss all the findings. So, uh, certain points which I wanted to stress you are See, the types of cases come for the respiratory system, either it could be a pleural based disease, either a pleural effusion or a pleural thickening or very rarely a pneumothorax which is a stable patient who does not need an ICD insertion. But we usually avoid such cases because these are the patients who are sick and they may not be liked to be percussed and examined by many candidates in a series. But sometimes if we have shortage of cases, we may keep a, a, a small pneumothorax which does not need any intervention to, to, check, to, 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 to check your uh, clinical skills to find out a subtle signs. Otherwise, very obvious cases only be key for the chest examination. So it could be plural based pathology. The second is it could be a parenchymal based disease. It could be either a resolving pneumonia, organizing pneumonia we may not keep because the patient is acutely sick. So again, a resolving pneumonia can be kept, which patient is off uh, uh, in, in oxygen and only on antibiotics. Or it could be a, a fibrotic lung disease or a fibrocavitary disease or interstitial lung disease. Interstitial lung disease is very commonly kept in the respiratory system examination. Now coming to airway diseases, either it could be a chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis or a bronchial asthma. Bronchial asthma usually we don't keep because they are acutely sick and sometimes there may not be any findings if they are, don't have the spasm. But if you have shortage of cases and sometimes the patient with some visas, we may keep if there is a shortage of cases. So these are the three groups of cases you will get. And then the fourth group is a pneumonectomy or a lobectomy. So you will have to use a certain uh, clinical characteristics to find out whether it's a whole pneumonectomy or a lobectomy. Okay, that I will teach you when I am doing the bedside examination technique. Now, during the respiratory examination, you know, you have the, just the, the general principles of examination, the general examination by the foot end of the bed. Then you go and confirm by these findings by the palpatory methods and then percussion and auscultation. In auscultation, you are concentrating on two factors. One, the breath sound. The, what is the quality of the breath sound? What is the intensity of the breath sound? These are the two things you are concentrating first. And then you are looking for the added sounds. Okay. So now I will just briefly tell you about the breath sound. You, you, you know there are three types of breath sounds actually. One is the tracheal sound. Tracheal sound. Normal tracheal breathing. Second is the normal vesicular breathing. Vesicular breathing. And the third one is the bronchial breathing. Okay. These are the three types of breathing quality of the sound. No, tracheal sound, all of you know, it's not very important in the clinical examination. But the tracheal sound is very important for an undergraduate student who is exa examining and learning the respiratory system because the tracheal sound is a hollow, non-musical sound uh, which is heard over the upper airways and it simulates a bronchial breathing in certain characteristics. So for a young candidate to learn how does the bronchial breathing look like we can ask them to auscultate over the suprasternal notch or on either side of the neck for the tracheal sound. And the tracheal breath sound is heard during the inspiration as well as during the expiration. Okay, just like the bronchial breathing. But this can be altered 
when there is an obstruction to the upper airway. If you hear a normal tracheal breath sound that shows the upper airway is patent. But if there is an obstruction to the upper airway, it can sometimes become a very noisy or it can become even a musical sound. Okay. And the tracheal sound where we use usually is in the sleep study. During the sleep study, we concentrate a lot on the, the lab people will concentrate more on the tracheal sound. Otherwise, nothing much in the clinical examination. Now, coming to the normal vesicular breath sound, it's a soft non-musical sound which is heard during inspiration and early part of expiration. So, it will not extend into the expiration. So, during the inspiration and during the early part of the expiration without any pause between the two. So, that is the normal vesicular breath sound. Now, what they say is now you know there are a lot of uh, advancement in the study of the physiology of the respiratory sounds and they have used the advanced computerized uh, sound, uh, the analytical method using multi-channel sound detection devices. They have used this and found out that the normal vesicular breath sound is not due to entry of air into the alveoli. It is not related to that at all. It's actually the, the, the sounds are generated, the, the inspiratory phase is generated in the segmental and subsegmental airways, whereas the expiratory phase is the more central uh, stations. That is why they, they, the concept is that. Now, normal vesicular breath sound, if you hear in a patient, uh, your task is to find out whether the intensity is diminished or not. So, this you have to auscultate. If, suppose if you are auscultating over one area, for example, the infraclavicular area, you should always compare with the left infraclavicular area. You should not go down, uh, vertically down, uh, over the one chest at all. You always compare with the opposite side. Then only you can decide whether the intensity of the normal vesicular sound is diminished or not. If the vesic normal vesicular breath sound, the intensity is diminished, then there are two things we have to think of. Either it could be an abnormality in the generation of the sound or it could be an abnormality in the transmission of the sound. So if it is in the generation, there will be a, a airway narrowing, severe airway narrowing or hypoventilation. These are the two things which can affect the generation of the uh, breath sound and you can produce a diminished breath sound. If it is transmission, it, you know if there is an abnormality in the pleural cavity in the breath, uh, as a pleural effusion or a hemothorax or a destructive parenchymal lesion like a destructive emphysema when there will be a, a, a defect in the transmission of the breath sound. So these are the mechanisms for a diminished breath sound and then you have to do the other corroborative uh, uh, percussion and auscultation findings to say that this is the pathology. So this is about the normal vesicular breath sound. Now coming to the bronchial breath sound, the bronchial breathing is again, it's a soft non-musical sound heard during the inspiration and throughout the expiration with a gap, definite gap between the inspiration and expiration. So this is the bronchial breathing. And uh, when you hear a bronchial breathing, uh, you have to think of uh, two pathologies only. One, it could be a consolidated lung tissue with a patent bronchus or it could be a fibrotic lung tissue with a patent bronchus. When you get the bronchial breathing, you should not confuse it with a normally heard tracheal sound or a no harsh vesicular sound in certain area of the chest you will get. For example, you can get a harsh vesicular breath sound or a tracheal sound which simulates a bronchial breathing in the right infraclavicular area of the medial aspect of the right infraclavicular area where the trachea is sometimes very peripherally positioned close to the chest wall. Okay, so here you can get a harsh vesicular breath sound or a tracheal sound which you may confuse as a bronchial breathing. So that is one side. The second side is the interscapular area where again 
a tracheal sound or a harsh vesicular breath sound can be confused with the bronchial breathing because the main tracheal divisions, the main bronchi are usually posteriorly placed close to the interscapular space, especially the right one. So I have seen many candidates making a mistake of con committing a bronchial breathing when there is a normal harsh vesicular breath sound in the right medial infraclavicular area or in the interscapular area and saying that there is a consolidation. So be careful about that and if you have a doubt about the bronchial breathing then you should think about the other characteristics of the bronchial breathing that is one is the bronchophony bronchophony okay the second one is the egophony and the third one is whispering pectorilaki I will tell you what is exactly these things. Now bronchophony means when there is a bronchial breathing, you know what happens is the airway sounds without filtering of the high frequencies are conducted to the chest wall to your diaphragm of the stethoscope. That's why you are hearing this bronchial breathing. So bronchophony means when you are testing for the vocal resonance, one, when you are asking the patient to say one, two, three, the sounds are heard as though he is talking very near to you. An example is, if there is a bomb blast in the gate of the hospital and the sound you are hearing as though it is very near to you inside this daycare. So that feeling will be there in bronchophony if the bronchial breathing is there. So bronchophony is nothing but you hear the sounds when you are checking the vocal resonance as though it is, her, it, it is spoken very near to your ear. That's bronchophony. Now coming to the uh, whispering pectoriloquy, when you ask him to say one, two, three, usually you will not hear one, two, three syllable by syllable. It will not be clear. You are hearing a sound only. But if you hear the syllable by syllable, one, two, three, as though he is whispering into your ear, if you hear, that is called whispering pectoriloquy. And the third one is the egophony. This bronchial breathing has got a nasal or a bleating quality that is the egophony. So all these three characteristics will be there in a bronchial breathing. So you should look at the vocal resonance very carefully and then you differentiate between the normal harsh vesicular breath sound or a tracheal sound which you are hearing in these particular areas of the chest wall or whether it is a bronchial breathing. So these are the three types of breath sounds you have to concentrate. So when you listen to the sound and you decide the quality of the sound and the density of the sound, you have to decide. Now you have to concentrate on the uh, added sounds or the extra sounds which you have concentrated. So you have examined the breath sound. Now your next task is to see what are the added sounds you can hear. So the added sounds, uh, there are non-musical sounds and musical sounds okay so what are the musical sounds added sounds one is the strider okay and uh, second is the vis and third one is the wrong type these are the musical added sounds okay so what is a strider strider is a musical sound which is a high pitched sound heard over the upper airway and it usually indicates there is some way some sort of an upper airway obstruction that is a strider and uh, the, the 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 strider if can be either an inspiratory strider or an expiratory strider if it is an inspiratory strider, you should think of extra thoracic lesions. Example, post extubation in the ICU, there is an extra thoracic uh, upper airway lesion. That's why the patient getting an inspiratory strider. Or it could be due to a laryngomalacia, where there is a, the, the constitution of the larynx is defective, so that produces an inspiratory strider. Or it could be due to vocal cord abnormality. These are the three causes of an inspiratory strider. 
if you get an expiratory stridor, it is an intrathoracic lesion. So it could be either a tracheomalacia, or it could be a bronchomalacia, or it could be an extrinsic compression of the airway, which produces an inspiratory stridor. Now there can be biphasic stridor. Biphasic stridor means during inspiration and expiration you are hearing. If you hear that, the causes are fixed lesions. For example, croup in a child can have a biphasic uh, stridor. If there is bilateral vocal cord lesion, it can produce a biphasic stridor. Okay, so these are the uh, causes of, or if, you, if, if there is a laryngeal mass or a laryngeal web, that can also produce a biphasic stridor. So this is stridor. Uh, stridor, a patient with a stridor may not be kept in the examination, but sometimes you can have a patient with a stridor if the patient is not very acutely ill. Okay, for example, a laryngeal mass is there and the patient has got an inspiratory, expiratory stridor, patient is not in acute dyspiratory distress and he has some other additional lung signs, then you may have to pick up the stridor, okay? The second is the wheeze. Wheeze, all of you know, it is a musical, uh, uh, high-pitched uh, sound which is heard during, usually, uh, in inspiration and expiration or both. So, wheeze can be heard either during inspiration or expiration or both phases you can hear. It's a musical sound. And whenever you hear it, the V's, it is suggestive of an airway narrowing. Okay. So if a generalized diffuse wheezing means many airways are narrowed, and usually that happens in bronchial asthma or COPD. But if it is if there is a localized wheeze over the chest, then that gives a, a clue to you that this patient must be having a bronchial airway obstruction. It could be either a tumor of a foreign body and this has to be picked up immediately and you have to look for the other corroborative signs for a foreign body or a mass lesion in the bronchi in the airway and you have to refer to the chest position immediately for further investigations. You should not label it as a bronchial asthma. So that is the importance of the V's, recognizing the V's. Now coming the ronchi, most of the people think that the ronchi is similar to V's and uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is no difference in the mechanism of generation of the ronchi and V's. But nowadays, because of this acoustic analysis uh, used to the, using the advanced computerized system, they found out that the ronchi is different from the V's. The ronchi are similar to uh, uh, snoring actually. The quality of the ronchi is limited to snoring. That is one. It is a low pitched sound. So some of the chest physicians use the terminology low pitched V's for ronchi and some of the, uh, the high pitched V's for the usual V's. And the ronchi, the mechanism of the ronchi now they say it is due to the clearing of the fluid films and abnormal airway collapsibility which produces the ronchi. And the ronchi is a non-specific sign. It can happen in, in an airway disease like uh, chronic bronchitis or a COPD you can get ronchi. Okay, so it is a low pitched wheeze. So these are the three musical sounds. Now what are the non-musical added sounds you should look for? Non-musical uh, added sounds. One is the fine crackle. Second, the coarse crackle. Okay, and third one is a squeak or a squack. And fourth one is a plural rub. These are the non-musical added sounds. So crackles are short explosive sounds. Okay. So fine crackle and coarse crackle sometimes you may find it difficult uh, to say whether there is a fine crackle or a coarse crackle. There is no intermediate quality. So in the exam, you have to say either a fine crackle or you have to say a coarse crackle. There is no intermediate between the two. So you should concentrate uh, on the face of the inspiration and expiration where you are get, hearing the crackle. Fine crackles are heard during the mid to the late phase of inspiration. The mid to the late phase of inspiration and sometimes spill over the expiration, spill over to the expiration. So if you hear these type of crackles, they are fine crackles. 
Then there are other characteristics of the fine crackers. One, they are not conducted to the mouth. One, they are not cleared by cough. They are gravity dependent. So you, you, you will be hearing the fine crackles in the dependent portions of the lungs. So usually that is why in the, super, in the sitting posture you will hear in the base of the lungs. In the lying position you may hear at the uh, posterior segments of the upper lobe. Okay, so that is again at the back. So fine crackles are one, they are not conducted to the mouth. Second, they are not cleared by cough. Third, they are gravity dependent. So they are heard mainly in the dependent portions of the lungs. And fourth one, they can change in the position or they can even totally disappear by changing the position of the patient. If you ask him to bend forward and oscillate at the back, sometimes the, the fine crackles can disappear because the dependent position has changed. Okay, these are the characteristics of the fine crackles. When you hear the fine crackles, you know there are certain conditions only. Either it could be an interstitial lung disease like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or some sort of an interstitial pneumonia or it could be due to cardiac failure or it could be due to a resolving pneumonia. These are the three conditions where you can get fine crackles. Okay, and in the exam, most of the time it could be an interstitial lung disease which you are getting or if it is localized, it could be a resolving pneumonia. If you hear fine crackles, in interstitial lung disease, they are being uh, uh, compared to uh, a Velcro character of the crackles. What is a Velcro is a two strips of a Velcro when you are separating. For example, this is the two strips of the Velcro. Okay, so you, this, you, you separate this sound. Okay, this, this is called the Velcro crackles. So that is characteristic of the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So sometimes you may get fine crackles at the basis where you will have the characteristic of velcro. So the examiner can ask you what is the velcro crackles. You can say that is the sound heard when you the, the two strips of a velcro are separated. This is the typical one. You heard that no? So in coarse crackles again they are non-musical explosive sounds which are heard during the early inspiration and during expiration. These are the coarse crackles. So what the difference between the fine and coarse crackles? Coarse crackles are not gravity dependent. So they can heard all over the chest. Second, they are conducted to the mouth. Okay? And they can be cleared by cough. And they are not changed by changing position of the body. So these are the differences between the fine and coarse crackles. When you hear the coarse crackles, you have only very few conditions. One, bronchiectasis. Second, COPD. Third one, sometimes you can hear coarse crackles in cardiac failure, if there are signs of cardiac failure. And the third one is the organizing pneumonia. These are the four conditions where you get the coarse crackles. So you have to, time, you have to very clearly time the, the, the phase where you are getting the added sound and then decide whether it's a fine crackle or a coarse crackle. There is nothing between the two. So you have to be very, very precise about your finding in the examination. Now comes the squeak. Squeak, uh, I, we are not expecting you to pick up in the examination. But sometimes you can hear a squeak. Squeak is nothing but, it's a musical sound like a wheeze which is preceded or followed by a crackle. So if you hear a wheeze and a crackle together in one area, that's called a squeak and that is suggestive of either an interstitial pneumonia or an organizing pneumonia. So if in an acutely ill patient, if you hear a squeak, that gives you a clue that is a pneumonia, acute pneumonia. But in a very well maintained patient, if you hear a squeak, that gives you a, 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 an indication that it could be idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Now coming to the pleural rub, it is nothing, it is again a non-musical sound. Okay, and it is because of the visceral pleura when it is inflamed and it can rub over the uh, parietal pleura producing a biphasic non-musical sound which is heard during inspiration and the corresponding phase of the expiration. And pleural rub is usually heard in the basal regions of the lungs 
because the pressure volume curve, you know, that comes in the steep portion of the volume curve in the basal regions. That is why they are heard better in the basal regions of the lungs. When you hear a pleural gum, it could be either a pleural inflammation or a pleural tumor. So these are the additional sounds which you have to concentrate. Okay. Now we will do the next session on how to do the uh, brisk examination of the respiratory system.